How's it going, guys? It's Tuesday. This is Al, and we're here to talk about the Thursday night football single game showdown on DraftKings. We're going to go through a couple different lineup combinations. I'm going to go player by player and give you my opinion of certain guys who we might want to use in the captain, alternatives to use in the captain spot, maybe find some value plays throughout this game. It's not the most attractive game, as that's one of the things that happens on Thursday night uh, as the season goes along. Every team has to get at least one prime time game. That's the way that it works in the collective bargaining agreement. So Thursday night games kind of end up being a little bit of the dregs. It used to be Sunday night, then they have these Thursday night games. So, you know, Denver against Arizona is what we got. The Cardinals against the Broncos. That's what we got to deal with. So if you want to play this uh, Thursday night slate and try and win the money that's at the top of the tournament, this is your best uh, opportunity to do that. We did play the Monday night football slate. If you watched that video, thank you for watching that video. Uh, I happen to take first place along with 139 of my best friends on DraftKings. Uh, 250K to first. But once you split the top 140, so like if you, you tie 140 ways, they add up first through 140th, then they divide it by 140. So I walked away with, uh, for first place in that one, about 4,150, something along those lines. For the first place lineup there, which was $10, I did have a ton of lineups in that tournament. Uh, but it is what it is. Good profitable night on Monday night for me. If you like these videos, please click the like button. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel uh, and hit that notifications bell. Let's get to Thursday night. <laughs> DraftKings, where you and 200 of your best friends can win a GPP together. Exactly. That'll make a good commercial, right? Because DFS is all about friends. So why don't we all go across the finish line together? But that's kind of the nature of these single game showdown slates, right? There's only two teams at play. You only have to pick six of them. Uh, so by the nature of the game, there's going to be splits. Way more so than on full game slates. That's one of the reasons I've said play this casually, guys. Right? Play these Thursday night games. Play these Sunday night games. Play these Monday night showdown games somewhat casually uh, to give yourself an opportunity. Now, uh... The team that won here and then the last two showdown slates, so Monday night and then the, I think the Sunday night as well, were won by two kicker lineups. Uh, we've spoke about that earlier in the year. I've also kind of pivoted off of those for cash. You look here and you see that the kickers have been priced up, right? So they're kind of jimmying around with the prices every single showdown slate to try and tune things up and tune things down. And we as players have to kind of stay ahead of things with that. So like essentially you could theoretically just plug two kickers in, right? Uh, and just go with it <clears throat> and then see what you can fit. I mean, not in the captain spot, obviously, right? So two kickers and you have an average salary of 10, seven, five, you pick one value play and plug in three studs, uh, and you can go along those lines in terms of the captain. Let's kind of take a look at everybody here. Come on, scroll up David Johnson or DFJ, as I like to call him. And you guys should know what DFJ means. And if you don't, you need to have listened to me longer, but somebody will fill you in. He is getting the 20 touches that we want out of uh, David Johnson, right? We're getting that. He's priced appropriately. He's the highest priced guy on the slate. Uh, he has one of the highest raw projected uh, scores. But if you look into how they're running him, 3.1 yards per carry, 3.1 yards per carry, 3.2 yards per carry. The last three games, 2.6 against Chicago. Chicago's a great defense. So that's fine. But essentially, they're just running David Johnson into a brick wall. They're running him between the guards a ton. They're not trying to get him out in space. You have this big, strong athlete that can run downhill and make one cuts and make defenders miss after you get him to the second level, and they're just not doing it. They're not utilizing him as much in the passing game or as much or as, uh, effectively in the passing game as we would like for them to do that. So this just kind of is what it is. David Johnson is somebody who I will consider for captain because he has touchdown upside. He's always got big play upside because of his skill set but based on this offense i just don't see it i love the six touchdowns through six games but they're all like one yard plow into the line fall into the end zone touchdowns they're basically have turned david johnson into matt asiata so good job cardinals coaching staff no manny sanders is probably my favorite guy to play in the captain spot evan silva uh detailed this morning something that i was going to talk about as well is that his red zone targets have kind of gone up uh the last couple of weeks greatly uh was utilized in the first few weeks did really well the last two weeks though double digit targets in both games really kind of starting to gel uh with case keenum 
We know how much Keenum has utilized the slot uh, from his last season in Minnesota, and we know that Emmanuel Sanders was moved inside to uh, facilitate getting Cortland Sutton onto the field more in three wide receiver sets, so he's spending more time in the slot this year than he used to, and now we're seeing that he's getting utilized a lot more, not just in terms of targets, but in terms of red zone targets. Manny Sanders at 10-8 is going to be in a ton of lineups, probably the highest owned guy on the slate, along with uh, David Johnson, but I prefer Manuel Sanders uh, for my captain spot. I will probably still have lineups that have David Johnson in the captain spot as well. Uh, putting quarterbacks in the captain slot is somewhat popular. I don't know that I want to do it on this slate because I don't really see the massive upside from these two quarterbacks. Case Keenum's nice uh, at 10K, probably somebody I'm going to roster, but not somebody with the the massive upside of, of uh, a a Thomas or a Christian Kirk, if he can catch a, a deep ball or Lindsay, if he can, you know, he's getting 15 touches or was getting 15 touches pretty much every single week. Uh, only 10 touches last week against the Rams, but that was against the Rams. You know that you're getting a good amount of usage out of him. Uh, same thing with Josh Rosen, right? Like I, I'm not seeing the upside to want to roster him as, as a captain, but I understand using him uh, as a flex play on this slate. DT, obviously I prefer, uh, Emmanuel Sanders to DT. I don't know if I prefer Cortland Sutton to DT yet, but I think that they're closer than most people think. You know? DT is a good receiver. Obviously a big target. Been a pro for a while, but when you consider the uh, when you consider the salary, I'm not so sure. Christian Kirk kind of coming into his own, seeing more targets as the weeks go on. Big playability, uh, good rookie wide receiver, 7,200. Larry Fitzgerald, questionable. We'll have to see if he plays. Uh, limited participant on Monday kind of is a, is a better thing than sits out on Monday. We're going to have to see whatever we see. Peterson covering DT probably says 420 Memphis Pro in the chat. Uh, Peterson plays one side. He doesn't shadow, uh, at least they have not utilized him as a shadow corner this year. So he will see some of Patrick Peterson, and so will Cortland Sutton see some of Patrick Peterson. But he's not going to, neither of them will see all of him, uh, and Manny will avoid him the most. Just a uh, personal opinion. Here's that gap that we always talk about. All the backup quarterbacks, 9K. Everyone. Uh, you got Freeman, not getting a ton of work. But does get the goal line work. Lindsay is probably my preferred back for, for Denver. If you want to play one of the defenses, totally understand, especially with the, the inability for Keenum to keep throwing the ball to the other team so far this season. Uh, Broncos defense against Arizona, sure. Arizona plays real slow. That's just their, their philosophy. Their coaching staff wants to play slow. Them and Miami, two of the slowest playing pace teams in the league. Kickers at... Well, let's look in terms of flex. Kicker's at 5th, 36 in there. Booker was essentially just playing passing downs, but now Lindsay has kind of started taking over those as well, at least the past few weeks. Hureman, getting solid amount of targets, especially for 2,800. I would probably prefer Hureman for a GP play, GPP play versus the kickers in this spot because uh, if he can get into the end zone, there's way more upside for a position player uh, than there is for a kicker. Same thing goes for basically everybody down here. Tim Patrick, just a flyer. Uh, not seeing a ton of guys down super low on this list that I'm very, very interested in. Sutton at 4,800 uh, for me is much better than one of the defenses. Hasn't had a breakout game yet, right? No games over double digits. If he can avoid Patrick Peterson, if they, you know, when they... Scheme to get guys on certain parts of the field. Uh, a lot of jump balls and a lot of red zone targets going Cortland Sutton's way, especially for a rookie. So he's at least involved. If he can catch a touchdown and luck box into two, uh, he could be a complete slate winner here on Thursday night. So let's take a look at a couple of builds, right? Uh, I've said that Sanders is probably my favorite play uh, in the captain spot. We do want to have David Johnson, uh, Philip Lindsay, somebody else that I'm definitely considering here. Cortland Sutton at 4,800 can take one of the offenses or the defenses if we expect uh, interceptions from, you know, from the quarterback, uh, and then Freeman as well, right? Obviously, I don't really want to load up against my own defense. You know, if Larry Fitzgerald plays, I don't hate him, right? If he's on the field, he should get targets. My issue is that they're just an 
unimaginative offense. This is just an ugly Thursday night football game. It just kind of, you know, it's one of those things, right? You're not going to get a lot of gold on Thursday night football every week. And we've been spoiled with the Sunday night football game with the Chiefs and the, the Patriots being, what, 43 to 40. Uh, and then last night's game with Green Bay and the 49ers, two teams that are very good on offense, not that great on defense. Now we've got a slow-paced team against a team that really can't figure out their identity on offense. This could just be an ugly. Is three running uh, an ugly game? Is three running backs a good tournament lineup? I would prefer two running backs and a wide receiver or a quarterback because that's just kind of the way that DraftKings tends to work usually. I mean, I don't hate Lindsay here. If you put Lindsay in the captain spot, what do we get? Put Lindsay in the captain spot. Go David Johnson. I don't know that I want three running backs. Maybe you know, I, I'd probably try and cap myself at two. I think I'll just play NBA on Thursday. That might not be a bad idea. Just did a video the other day with Drew Dinkmeyer from Daily Roto. If you guys want to go check that one out, you can. Uh, talking about how to kind of go about things. And I have a video from last year helping you get better uh, with my philosophy on how I pick players and what I'm doing in Daily Fantasy NBA. So if you're an NFL-only player who wants to dabble in some NBA, go check out those two videos uh, on the channel. We get Hewerman in here. Then we got 5,400. Cortland Sutton. Don't hate that. Obviously, the Lindsay lineups give you a little bit more. You need your captain to score you, you know, 25 plus fantasy points. Actual fantasy points. I think that Sanders and David Johnson have the easiest path to that. Lindsay could get there if he breaks a long touchdown run. Uh, that's just the way it goes. But this is an ugly, ugly slate. This is an ugly game. Sometimes that's just the way it goes uh, with Thursday night games. I do appreciate you guys being here. NBA season has also started. We're in the middle of what we call overlap in daily fantasy, where we've got NFL season going full bore and NBA season just kicking off. I've got plenty of other videos uh, for NBA. You can check one out right here. Here's another one right there. You guys know about all my NFL content that I put up throughout uh, every single week, three, four, five videos for NFL. We'll keep doing that and put out some NBA videos as well. Thanks for showing up. Bye, everybody. Good luck on Thursday.